Let's set it up. You've got this um, triangle. A, B, C, and it's scalene. Okay? And then you have a rectangle inscribed within it. And that rectangle can move. So I think it's called P up here. P, uh, S. All right. Now, what we want to show is that the biggest of that area of that rectangle can be, uh, the biggest it can get is half of the full triangle. Okay? So we're looking for a stationary point where this area is half of that one. Okay? So to make any start on this, you need to assign some variables. Right? Assign some variables, also assign some constants. So I've picked out four. Um, I've called the area of the whole triangle, okay? let that area, I've called it capital A. Now just as a, um, just as a convention, and just to make things easier for you to solve, we try to make, try to make constants capitals, right? variables lowercase, and angles as Greek letters. Okay? So that's why you see you know, thetas and alphas and gammas and that kind of thing. Um, so that's just to help us. I know there's two A's, but when you're doing your working, we're not going to be talking about any actual coordinates, really. We're just talking about lengths and values, that kind of thing. So that's my whole area. Uh, I also need to know... Um, the perpendicular height of this whole triangle, okay? So I've got this length here. I'm going to call that perpendicular height H. Okay. Now, I could work out the base, right? But I don't need to work out the base as another variable because the base is going to be a function of these two, right? As you'll see in short notes. So I'm not going to introduce another variable for that. Now, sorry, another um, constant. I really should make this capital H. Sorry, can I see gray Um, Yes, it's right here. Okay, so capital H, constant, constant. Okay, smooth. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Now, I'll introduce the variable parts now, okay? Now, the variable parts are the dimensions of this rectangle, okay? Because they can move about and we can change it. It can be a really flat one or a really tall one, that kind of thing. So I'm calling um, the width of um, the rectangle PQRS. I think I called it X. X because it's a horizontal thing, right? So width. And the height. Um, of the same rectangle as y. Now the thing about these two variables is I will actually be able to get rid of one eventually. Okay, But it takes some time to get there. I'm going to get one in terms of the other. I'm just going to leave them there for now. So if that makes... i get rid of this and this. That makes that y, right? That part there. So therefore this section up here for that little small triangle up top will be the total height minus that. Okay, you happy with that so far? Now this part across the bottom, that's going to be x. And if I want to work out that base <coughs> length, bc, okay, because I know the area of a triangle, right? The area of a triangle is um, base times height on 2, right? Well, my area is actually called a, right? My base is what I want to work out. My height is capital H. So when I rearrange this, right, the base I'm after is a h a wait hold on two a on h yeah two a on h capital okay so I'm going to call this whole <coughs> way down the bottom two a on h okay so now I'm set up now this is um this is where the weird bit comes in and I know some people will not be very comfortable with me doing this but deal with it, I'm going to do it anyway. It makes things a lot easier to work with. <laughs> is that what you've got down here, this weird trapezium looking shape here, okay? P, Q, C, V. It's trapezium, right? What I'm going to do is take that trapezium and I'm going to slice out the rectangle in the middle, okay? You're like, huh? You'll see why in a second. But if I take that out, which I can totally do because the rectangle, right, the sides are equal, okay? What I'm going to get is this new shape. Um, and B, right? This is also going to be the point Q. It's going to move over because it sort of collapses. Okay. This is going to be uh, C over here. And in the middle 
you've got point S, it's also point R, they're the same point. Okay, so you're on top of each other. Okay, so I'm going to call this triangle graceful and elegant as usual, Grant. I'm going to call this triangle PBC, and I can show that this triangle and the one on top, right? Can you see they're going to be similar, right? Um, you've got, because of this um, rectangle here, you've got parallel lines, right? So you've got a whole bunch of corresponding angles, which I'm going to show in a second. So, let's have a look at this triangle. In triangle P, B, C, and triangle, the one at the top, A, P, Q. Okay? For similarity, all I need is two angles, right? So I'll just use corresponding angles to go this pair and this pair. Okay, you see that? That's not too hard, right? So let me just, what would I actually write out? I'm going to say angle APQ is ang equal to angle PBC because corresponding angles on those parallel lines are equal. Okay, I've been asked this a few times before. Yeah? How can we add that to abbreviate? Abbreviations, I mean, we kind of do use abbreviations where there's no ambiguity, right? But when there's like, well, okay, for instance, if you saw this, okay, we allow that for congruence, but we don't allow it for similarity because it's like side, 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 but what about them, right? The fact that they are in proportion. So when you abbreviate that, you lose some meaning. When you abbreviate this, you don't lose meaning. It's like, yeah, okay. What's delta A, B, Q? Thank you. Okay, <laughs> with context, right? No, I'm not doing calculus. Okay, so therefore, uh, I've got those two angles equal. I can say similarly because it's exactly the same reason. Angle AQP, they're the opposite ones, are equal to angle PCB. Okay, so similar. Okay, so far so good. But where am I going here? Okay, when I've got these two similar triangles, right, I can relate a whole bunch of um, these variables and constants together, okay? Namely, this triangle here that I just introduced, right, um, its height is y, right? Because I got it from here. Its base is the whole base of the whole triangle minus the rectangle part which I cut out, right? So this base here, uh, from here to here, is, that's the whole base, and that's the rectangle part, right? So I'll subtract them. 2a on h minus x. Okay, now what this is going to let me do is when I do similar triangles and corresponding sides, I'm going to get some ratios that allow me to work with these variables, okay? So here's what I've got. x on, let's see here. Which way shall I do it? Do it this way. Now, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to cut that. But you guys know what it is. Corresponding lengths in similar triangles are in the same ratio or in proportion. Okay. Here's my reason. So, what am I? What's my goal here? Um, I'm going to use these ratios to find the relationship between x and y. So I don't have x and y anymore. Do you remember, the whole idea in maximum questions is eliminate everything down to as few variables as you can. Ideally, one, because then you can differentiate, find stationary points, and so on. Okay. So I'm actually going to, um, you're going to cross-multiply this, simplify out. After a lot of deliberating, here's where you end up. I get x equals this. Okay, 